Um, so with you guys, my topic, I'll be talking about just the trustworthiness of the Bible. Um, this has been something that has been attacked more than any other book by critics, um, the trustworthiness, claiming it contradicts itself, it's full of discrepancies. How should we respond as Christians? How do we distinguish the Bible from the Quran or the Bhagavad Gita or any other religious book? Um, can the Christian even show that somehow the Bible is from God? I believe there is good reason to trust that the Bible is divinely inspired and that the Christian doesn't have to just take a blind leap of faith to hold to this claim. The reason of what, or like Gary said, divine inspired can hold some complexities. I would agree that it's defined as God-breathed, um, but it's not really what I'm focused on in this discussion uh, what we should keep in mind is that how is to keep in mind is that how do we know the Bible says what God wants it to say exactly how He meant it to be written? Throughout this session, I will attempt to show that through advances in textual criticism, manuscript evidence, tests for historical reliability, and the u- uniqueness of the Bible, Christians can be confident that the Bible is a book by one author that we can trust. Before endeavoring to show that the Bible is God-breathed, we need to establish that we have the same Bible that was originally written. After all, there's over 400,000 different variants of the New Testament. Is there a chance that through time and scribal errors that the Bible has lost its inspiration? Before addressing the inspiration of Scripture, can the Christian at least show that the Bible is historically reliable? A book that claims to be divinely inspired but is historically incorrect would prove to be the exact opposite, since God is perfect. To show the Bible's reliability, we will use the principles that a historian, C. Sanders, C. Sanders who's a non-Christian, uses for historiography. This includes the bibliographical, internal evidence, and external evidence tests. So first of all, the bibliographical test asks, since we don't have the original documents in our possession, how, can, how confident can we be that the test, texts that we now have are the same as the original based off the number of manuscripts we have? When it comes to the New Testament, the Bible has 24,000 copies in existence, with the earliest copy being John Ryland's papyri, dated at 125 AD, which is remarkably early. The closest competitor is the Iliad by Homer, with only 643 copies still in existence. Regarding the 400,000 variants in the New Testament, 99% of these variants can be addressed as simple grammatical errors in the original Greek text, um, such as the placing of commas, saying Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ. Um, These are all examples of the 99%. The other 1% has no effect on any core doctrine, such as the deity of Christ or the second coming. With this volume of manuscripts, we can be confident that we have the writing of the original documents without having the documents actually in hand. We don't have the autographs, per se, like the, you know, what John wrote on. We don't have that. But we don't need to. So, who was I? And, okay. And what about the Old Testament? Well, we know the Hebrew Bible was completed around 400 B.C. And until the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, the the earliest complete copy we had was in 900 A.D. This involves a time gap of about 1,300 years. Luckily, the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls gives strong bibliographical evidence for the reliability of the Old Testament. Copies discovered in Qumran Cave date at around 125 B.C., before Christ. Stated by Gleason Archer, the copies proved to be word-for-word identical to 95% of the Hebrew Bible. The other 5% of variation consisted chiefly of obvious slips of the pen, variations in spelling by the scribe. And excitingly, we now have a complete copy of Isaiah's chapters 52, verse 53, which is interpreted to be the suffering servant, which is supposed to be Jesus, which was written before Jesus came. Like, it was dated 125 B.C., Christ came A.D., so amen to that. Since we can be confident that we have what was originally written, we now use the internal evidence test to prove that what we have is credible. In other words, are the authors of the Bible reliable? 
Historians are mainly concerned with the ability to tell the truth. And the standard practice is to trust the author unless he disqualifies himself. The chronological and geographical closeness of the author to the events recorded also provides strong grounds for credibility. Specifically with the Gospels, we know Christ died around 33 AD, and Mark's Gospel was written 50 to 53 AD, which leaves about a 17 to 20 year formative period um, for the Gospel to go from oral tradition to a written medium, which is too short of a time gap for any major corruption of text since eyewitnesses can still confirm or deny what is being written. New Testament authors will often put their credibility on the line as well, claiming to be eyewitnesses and then in turn turning the tables on the critic by saying, you yourself have seen these things or you yourselves know this, kind of like what Paul does. He says, 500 are still alive. Um, if you're going to make these kind of statements, you better be correct about your details because it'll just be thrown back in your face. Um, so the extra, so that's the internal evidence test, which the Bible passes. Now the external evidence test investigates whether other historical material confirms or denies the testimony given by the documents. In the case of the Bible, this passes the test with all the historical figures close to the scene confirming what the writers are writing and claim. Some contemporary sources around this time who verify the Bible's claims about itself would include Josephus, Pliny the Younger, Tacitus, Meribar Serapion. The external evidence test also includes archaeological evidence. Since it would take a lot of time to talk about this, I'll just briefly quote archaeologist uh, Joseph Free, who states that archaeology has always confirmed count- has confirmed countless passages which have been rejected by critics as unhistorical or contradictory to the known facts. Archaeology always proves and supports the Bible. Now, that's all well and done to prove the Bible's historical reliability. But to show that it's actually God-breathed is quite another contest. Um, That's another question. How do we do this? Well, the first criterion would be its self-attestation. As all the previous speakers have said, the Bible does claim to be inspired. Jesus calls the Bible the Word of God in Mark chapter 7, verse 13, claims it can't be broken. As Peter says in his second letter, For no prophecy was ever made by any act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Jesus makes clear that the Helper, the Holy Spirit, will guide the apostles in all truth and bring to remembrance what he said. As St. Paul says in in his second letter to Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is God-breathed. So there can be no doubt that at least the Bible sees itself as the God-written word. But, you know, as this doesn't obviously prove that the Bible is from God, but it is a needed criteria. You know, there's no reason to have this conversation if it's not making these claims about itself, that it claims that it is divine inspired. So when examining from an external perspective to see if the Bible is divinely inspired, I think it would be helpful uh, to begin by looking at the overall uniqueness of the Bible um, compared to surrounding historical iniquity and its kind of distinctive properties. For starters... When comparing the Bible with other surrounding historical iniquity, it's really in a separate class. Um, the Bible has been written over a 1,500-year span of time by 40 different authors, three different continents, and three different languages. And it somehow interlocks in a harmonious fashion. Um, authors will often end on cliffhangers with no conclusion, just for the next author to pick up where they left off with Remarkable unity and agreement, which is really incredible. The Bible has been read by more people and published in more languages than any other book in the history. Though it has been attempted to be destroyed more than any other book, we have more manuscript evidence for the Bible than any ten pieces of classical literature combined. and appears to thrive from persecution. When looking at the Bible's teaching, its skill and prophetic fulfillment is really beyond compare. In fact, 27% of the Bible is predictive, which means every one in four verses is prophetic. And hundreds of these detailed prophecies have been fulfilled in literal fashion. So no other book can obviously, you know, compare to these qualities and characteristics. The Bible's brutal honesty is another attribute that provides a strong argument for its divine authorship. Simply put, it records stories and character arcs that are in sharp contrast to what humanity has shown to record. Um, 
From what historians have seen, people of iniquity have always shown to record the highs or successes of their civilization uh, or people group. This goes for Greeks, Romans, Egyptians. We always read of the victories won in battle or the successful reign of a particular king is documented. Human history recorded by humans has always shown to have kind of a positive undertone to it. The Bible is not like that. In the Old Testament, we continuously see the embarrassing failures of the Israelites recorded in history. In the books of Judges, we see the constant disobedience to God. In Numbers, we see the complaining of the people in the wilderness. Uh, And the battles won and lost are recorded. Even the failures of Israelite heroes are recorded. Um, Examples, Abraham lying to Abimelech about um, his wife, Sarah, being his sister. Moses killing an Egyptian. Um, King David committing adultery with Bathsheba. In the New Testament, we see Peter denying Christ three times. We see Paul killing Christian. We see John worshiping an angel. You know, some of these things would be embarrassing for the author to record. Um, So it begs the question is, why why would we record it if it makes man look bad? What is the aim? I mean, this strongly refutes uh, the theory of embellishment because it makes us look bad. There would be no purpose to writing it. So another indication that is worth noticing is when examining whether the Bible is from God is the unique encounters it provides to its readers. Hebrews chapter 4 states that it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. Most Christians who read the Bible make note of the life-changing experiences that it offers. As Tyler said earlier, it has a way of reading you. This isn't a clue that is rooted in objectivity, and every person who reads the Bible has a subjective first-person experience. However, the similar subjective experiences, when taken cumulatively as a whole, does show and indicate that an honest, truth-seeking person will have a similar encounter with the Bible. Finally, with the Christian, if the Christian still has issues trusting the Bible, I will argue for the trustworthiness of it based on Jesus' claims. Like all of Christianity, the Bible stands and falls off Christ and his resurrection. Um, to not trust the Bible is to not trust Christ. He spoke, obviously, very highly of the Bible. He said, not one pen, not dot, um, that it was God-breathed. Simon Greenlee, Harvard Law professor, specialized in looking at evidence. When looked at unbiasedly, the resurrection is one of the most historically and well-attested facts of all history. The only way you can't accept it is if you have an anti-supernatural bias guiding you. The skeptic of the Bible's faith is greater than the person that trusts the Bible. That being said, I think we have good grounds to believe that the Bible is trustworthy. Uh, We know it is God-inspired. And yeah, that's what I got for you guys.